Have you ever wondered how your Arduino can sense the world or control lights, motor, or even robots? It always starts with understanding its pins. In this lesson, we will explore the digital and analog pins of your Arduino, how they work, when to use them, and how to avoid frying your board. Yes, that is a real risk. Then, we will put theory into practice by creating a mesmerizing RGB LED fade effect. No complex coding yet. This is lesson 5 of our 24 part Arduino for Beginners series. If this is your first time here, I recommend going back and watching the first 4 lessons. They will help you get the most out of this one. Alright, let's get started. Before we dive in, I quickly shout out to DF Robot, the sponsor of this series. All the components we are using, including this Arduino board, come from the MindPlus Arduino Coding Kit. It's an all-in-one kit that made this course super easy to follow, especially if you are just starting out. DF Robot is one of the global leaders in open source hardware. In their store, you can find basically anything you need for your project, from Arduino Uno to single board computers like the late Panda Sigma. If you are looking for high quality components with affordable price, definitely check it out. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the lesson. When examining an Arduino board closely, you'll notice two key labels, digital and analogian. This refers to the different types of pins available for interfacing with components and peripherals. Digital pins operate at two distinct voltage levels, zero, low, or 5 voltage high. This binary behavior makes them ideal for applications that require simple on-off control, such as turning LEDs on or off, reading the state of a push button, or activating relays. On the Arduino Uno, digital pins are numbered 0 to 13. By default, digital pins are configured as input, meaning they are ready to read signals. However, they can also be explicitly set as outputs using the pin mode function in your code. This flexibility allows digital pins to either receive digital signals from sensors or switches, or send digital signals to actuators or other components. Analog pins on the Arduino are designed to read varying voltage levels, typically in the range of 0 to 5 volts. These continuous signals differ from the on-off nature of digital inputs. Devices like potentiometers, light sensors, or temperature sensors often output analog voltages, which can be measured by analog pins to produce a value between 0 and 1023 corresponding to 0 to 5 volts with a 10-bit resolution. It's important to note that analog pins cannot output true analog voltages. However, in applications where analog-like output is needed, such as timing an LED or controlling more speed, Arduino uses a technique called boost with modulation to simulate analog behavior using digital signals, allows the Arduino to approximate analog output using a digital pin. This is done by switching the pin on and off rapidly, generating a square wave. The key parameter here is the duty cycle, which defines the percentage of time the signal stays high during each cycle. For example, analog write 200 and 55 results in a 100% duty cycle, meaning the signal stays high all the time, equivalent to 5 volts. Analog write 127 gives a 50% duty cycle, where the signal is high half of the time and low the other half, perceived as 2.5 voltage on average. Analog write 63 corresponds to a 25% duty cycle, roughly 1.25 volt average output. When this switching happens fast enough, typically around 500 Hz on most Arduino boards, connected devices like LEDs or motors respond as if they were receiving a constant analog voltage. For instance, an LED will appear dimmer with a lower duty cycle and brighter with a higher one. The length of each PWM cycle is determined by the frequency and the amount of time the signal stays high. By modulating this width, Arduino can simulate different voltage levels using only digital outputs. Not all digital pins support PWM output. 
On the Arduino One, for example, only pins marked with title symbol, usually pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11, are PWM capable. Always refer to your board's pinout diagram to verify which pins can be used for a PWM. Additionally, although analog pins are designed for input, many Arduino boards, including the Uno, allow you to repurpose analogue pins as digital input output. If your project requires more more digital pins than what is available, this can be a helpful workaround. Just make sure to consult your board's technical specifications to confirm compatibility. We had enough theory for now. Let's move on and get our hands dirty. In this project, we will combine everything we've learned so far to create a smooth color fading effect using a digital RGB LED module. The idea is to gradually increase or decrease the brightness of each primary and mixed color, red, green, blue, purple, cyan, yellow, and white, giving the illusion of a soft, flowy transitions between them. This project demonstrates practical use of pulse width modulation on a digital pin to simulate analog output. You will see how PWM controls brightness by adjusting the duty cycle over time. For this project, you need the following components Arduino Uno, Input Output Expansion Shield, Digital RGB LED Module, Three Pin Cable, USB Cable for uploading the sketch. Now that you got all components, let's assemble them. Firstly, Attach the input-output expansion shield to the Arduino Uno. Then, take the tripping cable and connect it to the RGB LED module. Later, plug the other end of the cable into the digital pin tree on the shield. Be careful with the R order. The blue wire connects to the signal pin. The red wire connects to VCC. The black wire connects to GND. Note, this RGB module uses a single digital pin for control rather than one thing per color, which means the color data is encoded and sent serially using the NeoPix protocol. It's much more efficient than traditional RGB modules and enables advanced effects with minimal wiring. Once everything is connected, plug your Arduino into your computer using the USB cable. Now that everything is set up, it's time to start coding. Open the Arduino Cloud Editor, just like we did in the previous lessons. Then, head over to the GitHub repository for this series, link in the description, and copy the code for today's project. Once the code is loaded, let's walk through it together. We will use the Adafruit NeoPixel library to control the RGB LED. This library simplifies communication with digital RGB LEDs using a single signal wire. Additionally, it manages the timing and color data needed to drive compatible LEDs. Inside the setup function, we have LED.begin to initialize the LED strip. LED.setBrightness64 reduce brightness to a medium level on a 0 to 255 scale to avoid excessive power draw and make the fade effect gentler on the eyes. Now let's take a look at the loop function. This function is calling another function called fade in out, a custom function divide in the end of the sketch. This function takes three arguments. The values for red, green, and blue. Each call to fading out tells the RGB LED to display a specific color by mixing these three primary colors components. It first fades the LED in, increasing brightness from zero to full, and then fades it out back to zero. After all the colors are displayed with fading and fade out effect, the loop repeats from the beginning. This creates a continuously and smooth color cycle animation unless you unplug your Arduino. By wrapping everything in calls of the fading out function, we keep the code simple, readable, and focused, perfect for beginners learning how to work with RGB LEDs. If this code feels a bit confusing right now, don't worry, we are not supposed to fully understand it yet. 
In the next class, we will dive deep into coding fundamentals. We will explore loop structures, conditional statements, logic operators, math operations, and more. These concepts are the building blocks of everything we will do going forward, and uh, they will make this kind of code much easier to follow. Just stick with it. Everything will start to click in lesson 6. Now that you understood the code, let's upload it. In this lesson, we won't use MindPlus because unfortunately it doesn't support the digital RGB mojo, but we will certainly come back to this tool in future projects. And that's it for today's class. You now understand the difference between digital and analog things, how to configure inputs and outputs, and how to simulate analog output using PWM, a core skill you use in almost every future Arduino project. Today, you build a colorful RGB light fader using just one thing. And now you know how it works under the hood. In the next lesson, you dive into the world of loops, conditionals, and logic, which will unlock even more creative power for your project. If you found this class helpful, like the video, subscribe, and check the GitHub repository in the description to download the code. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in lesson 6.